Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 16.6, sexually transmitted infections. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For this very short topic, you need to describe the term sexually transmitted infection, understand how HIV is transmitted, and explain how the spread of sexually transmitted infections is controlled. There's no extended supplement for this lesson. So a Sexually transmitted infection, or STI, is an infection that is transmitted through sexual contact. Human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, is an example of a pathogen that causes an STI. HIV is present in the bodily fluids of infected people, such as blood and semen, and can therefore be transmitted from person to person through sexual intercourse. The virus is thought to attack a particular type of lymphocyte, or white blood cell, restricting the sufferer's ability to produce antibodies and fight infection. This makes them more likely to contract other diseases and increases the severity of symptoms when they do. Over time, HIV may lead to AIDS, which stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. The immune systems of people with AIDS have been severely damaged by the HIV virus, leaving them highly vulnerable to other pathogens. This means that even a relatively benign illness like the common cold can be extremely serious, and in some cases may even result in death. The primary modes of HIV transmission include unprotected sexual intercourse with an infected partner, sharing contaminated needles or syringes during drug use, and receiving contaminated blood transfusions or organ transplants. HIV may also be passed from mother to fetus through the placenta during pregnancy, and from mother to baby via breast milk. It's important to note that HIV cannot be transmitted by mosquitoes or other insects, or through casual contact like shaking hands or sharing utensils. Fortunately, there are several preventative measures that can significantly reduce the spread of sexually transmitted infections. Individuals can use condoms which act as a barrier against pathogens, limit the number of sexual partners they have, and get tested for STIs following unprotected sex. Regular testing allows individuals to make informed decisions regarding their sexual activities, choice of partner, and the adoption of necessary precautions. Those who test positive for an STI should seek medical treatment immediately and abstain from sexual intercourse until the infection has been eradicated. Other preventative measures include using sterile needles and avoiding the sharing of drug paraphernalia, promoting comprehensive sex education, and taking precautions during childbirth and breastfeeding, particularly if the mother is diagnosed with HIV. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 16.6, sexually transmitted infections. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 17.1, chromosomes, genes, and proteins.